Hi, and welcome to Securely's video on the introduction of policy creation and our safety console web interface. In this video, we're going to discuss how to create policies, what the, some of the different options are inside the policies, and a little bit about the policy hierarchy and the way they work. So as you can see on the screen, we have our policy editor selected on the left-hand side, which is our navigation pane for the Nucleus UI. What's interesting is you can see that I've got some policies created here for some various different scenarios, but we're going to kind of go from the top down and discuss what the system is capable of uh, from the get-go. Now, we've talked a little bit about in a prior video what the global settings does. Um, these settings are very specific to your entire account. Um, everything from the very specific options of enabling force logins for our DNS and Smart, pro uh, smart Pack product um, down to self-harm notifications and even customization of your block page messaging. Policies are created and then mapped in the policy map to either a Google OU structure or an Active Directory OU structure in the case that you're an Office 365 customer. Within the policy editor, I have several different options to create custom policies. We're going to cover that. But by default, we have a global setting, which affects the entire account with a global allow. It should be noted that a global allow is kind of special. Placing sites in the global allow or global deny completely bypass the securely platform for certain products like SmartPak and our DNS platform. So global allowing something should be viewed as something along the lines of a super allow list. If you want something to completely bypass securely, not show up in the logs, a global allow is going to be that specific place. Now, we've recently added some new utilities in our policy editor area, such as the category lookup tool, which is super helpful. Sometimes when you are planning out new software that you've purchased and you want to make sure that your web filter is not interfering with that software, it's important to check and see if your filtering software or your filtering platform is going to be, you know, intercepting that traffic and causing issues. One of the biggest differences in a securely cloud-based model of how we process traffic at an appliance is securely as a selective mechanism. We do not content filter everything, and therefore it's important to verify something before you put it in an allow or deny list. As you can see here, we now have a tool where I can enter a URL, I can press search, and it's going to tell me if the system has that categorized or not, and then I can make an informed decision on whether I'm going to add that to an allow or deny list without messing up any of my other traffic. We give you a global settings out of the box. We also give you a default policy out of the box. The default policy exists as kind of a safety net, a catch-all. If you were to deploy this product out of the box without configuration, at least you would have a default policy that's going to content filter users. It is set to a pretty strict standard. In each policy, you've got some settings that we can discuss, such as locking all the major search engines into a safe mode, uh, things like YouTube restricted mode and even keyword scanning. We've also introduced some new features recently, such as flagging gun related searches, which may or may not be important for a particular district's needs. But each policy has a setting section, a category section, where they can block and allow specific categories, an allow and deny list, and we're also introducing some unique YouTube controls that are going to be separate from what's offered inside of G Suite. Now, when you go to create a custom policy, we can click on this button here, and I've kind of given three options. Now, most of the time when I'm creating custom policies, I'm just going to be naming a policy. We're going to call this IT test. We're going to create that policy, and then we're going to start filling it out. Now, some things are automatically enabled under a default policy. Um, at least, uh, I'm sorry, not a default policy, but, um, but whatever custom policy that you create. But we're wanna go, we want to go through uh, this brand new policy. We want to make sure at least the basics are enabled, things like safe mode and all the major search engines, keyword scanning. We want to make sure that users are protected. And then I'm going to go through and maybe block the categories that are relevant to whatever policy that I've just created. As you can see, I have an allow block. Some other features that we now have available, Nucleus UI, is the ability to clone policies. You know, when I, once I get started and I've got a good baseline, instead of having to create a brand new policy in the past, I can take a policy, such as the one I've just created, 
and I can clone this policy and maybe make some modifications. This is very important when you're starting with elementary school, middle school, high school policies. You can start at the top, get a good baseline going, and then select the features that you want, clone it, maybe make it more restrictive or less restrictive as you go forward. So it makes it a little bit easier to do. So the other two options we should discuss under the custom policy area is the ability to do an IP-based policy. Now this is not building a policy based on an internal IP. This is building a policy based on the exit address or the NAT address of a particular area on the network or device. Uh, not many people use this functionality anymore. Um, maybe a customer has a server VLAN and they don't want people to have to authenticate or devices to have to authenticate on that VLAN and they just want to have it filtered a very specific way. Maybe a lab is all exiting out a particular public address and we want that lab filtered a very specific way, but we don't want to do things like authentication. That is where we can build an IP-based policy. There's also some confusion about the third option, which is creating a take-home policy. Um, a lot of people assume that um, securely doesn't filter off-site out of the box. That's not true, we do. Um, if no take-home policy is created, users are filtered the same as they are at the district as they are at home. Creating a take-home policy gives you the ability to say, oh, you know what, I'm going to have my users filtered a very specific way. We're at school, but maybe at home we're going to do something a little bit different. And then, of course, our parental controls also apply, and that'll be covered in a later video. But take-home policy is not required to filter off-site. It's just a feature available to give you more options. That kind of concludes our talk about policy creation, allow and deny list, custom policies, and the features within. Thank you.